Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to the second part of our three-part series on creating an ASP.NET blog engine with DevExpress presented by technical evangelist Don Wibier. In this session, we'll continue to build the ASP.NET blog engine that uses ASP.NET web forms and DevExpress ASP.NET controls. You'll learn about setting up the global infrastructure for the site. See how to set up a responsive ASP.NET master page with the help of the skeleton CSS boilerplate how to set up some different layouts by using the media queries with Skeleton, and how to make some modifications on the Moderno theme by overriding some CSS selector classes. I will now hand things over to Don Wibier. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome at this webinar. Um, in the previous webinar, we've set up the storage system for the blog engine with the powerful ORM data model wizards, which in turn generated all of the persistent objects classes for the object for our data model. So, um, in this uh, uh, in this uh, webinar, we will be setting up a responsive ASP.NET master page uh, together with some CSS media queries, and we will do some theme customization. Um, and this will make sure that our uh, our blog engine is looking good on uh, different devices. For everybody who doesn't know what an ASP.NET master page is. Um, a master page allows you to create a consistent layout for the pages in your application. A single master page defines how your site looks and feels and uh, you can also code some standard behavior in it. So when users request a content page, uh, that content page will be uh, merged with the, the layout of the master page together with the content from the content page. So that's that's a quick intro on the on the master page concept. So before we getting into code, I uh, think it would be wise to give you a brief history on uh, on web design. Um, back in the days when there was wasn't any CSS and uh, HTML5 wasn't invented yet, we had to position our content by using HTML tables. And we will put in some nested HTML tables and some more tables, and we will put in some background images in rows or cells and whatever to get the design right. And yeah, that would result in like massive amounts of HTML, which was pretty much unmaintainable. So at a later stage, there was like the introduction of CSS, and uh, there you could specify all width and height and alignments and so on of certain elements in, in separate CSS files and uh, that would clean up your HTML quite a bit. The problem was that the CSS was a bit bigger because you had to take all kind of quirks and, and odd things of different browsers into consideration and you needed to, to build in special hacks for special browsers and stuff like that. So then, I mean these days we have like the CSS grid based positioning and uh, that's also what we're going to use because it's it's fairly simple. The grid is developed only once. It's got all the quirks and things in there for the different browsers to, to look good and uh, the only thing that you need to worry about is how to place your content inside that grid. <coughs> um, so if we're going to take a look on how that works, uh, I have I've, I've drawn uh, a simple grid system here, and there are a couple of, of open source grids out there, and I would definitely recommend getting one of those because uh, it saves you tons of work. Most grids contains uh, contain 12 or 16 columns, and uh, that number is is chosen because 12 and 16 are dividable by quite a huge number of other numbers, so you could have like a great variety in, um, in, in layout. And then what you basically do is uh, you place a couple of bands, which you can see in the, 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 the red, the red uh, divs, they are called bands, which will group specific elements together. And as you can see, I will have in this design I have four bands and I will place a logo on top, I will pay, place a menu inside one of the bands and I will put my content in there. And there you can also see that the, there are in the, in the content band there is like one 
diff which has a width of 8 and there are 2 with a width of 4. And the grid takes care that the 2 of 4 will drop down each other and together the total width should be 12. So the 8 plus 4 is 12. So that is that is in a nutshell how a grid positioning system works. And then, yeah, the most recent development is like a responsive grid. Uh, because the first generation grids, they were more or less pixel based, so you would always have like a fixed size of your page. So if you would resize your browser or your screen is smaller, then you would need to scroll horizontally. Um, while with these uh, responsive grids, uh, stuff just happens to get smaller, or it will drop down. For instance, with the content blocks that you see here, the two four diffs would drop down and it that would all be taken care of by the grid. So that is also a quick introduction to the responsive design. As you can see, I've taken a, a really simple approach on how to describe what responsive is. Uh, on the first picture, you see like a big screen, uh, a workstation, and uh, it will have like uh, a really good layout. Everything fits on there. If you go to the second one, which is supposed to be a tablet, you'll see that stuff is slightly different organized, but it is still good looking and it is still uh, the best uh, user experience on that device. And if you go to the, to the last one, you'll see that uh, the content is rearranged just a bit again. So this is, th these are basically some scenarios where responsive is, is uh, pretty nice to use. So, these are also uh, the, the, three, uh, the, the three bullet points that you would need to get a responsive design. So, the one that I was mentioning already is the CSS grid layout system. Then, with the introduction of CSS3, there is uh, something called CSS media queries, which allows you to make specific selectors depending on the screen size of the client or the visitor who is uh, watching your page. And we'll get into that in a couple of minutes. And then, of course, if you want to do some scalable stuff, then you would better uh, use um, SVG, which is uh, vector graphics, and uh, specifically for logos and stuff which is involved in the design of the site, so content and images and stuff. Obviously, you can't make that an SVG. But things like a logo, can be made up as an SVG, and then if you, if you are looking on a smaller device, then it get resized pretty nice. And uh, yeah, so that's that's a, that's a third item which comes into responsive design. So for this demo, I'm going to use the skeleton <coughs> CSS boilerplate. Um, the skeleton CSS boilerplate is just a real simple setup to get you started. Uh, pretty quick, and um, you can compare it with Twitter Bootstrap as well. But Twitter Bootstrap is, is is more of a complete framework. It has like stuff like form controls, pop-ups, all kinds of JavaScript. It's 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 quite a big framework. And I mean, for this for this webinar, it's I think a bit too much uh, to get into the Bootstrap stuff. But maybe we can do another webinar uh, later about uh, Twitter Bootstrap as well. But the skeleton one is, is pretty plain, light. Hey, Don. Well, <laughs> Don, are you there? Well, yeah. okay, let me jump in here, Amanda. It's Mihul. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, Don would be back in a sec, I'm sure. So Don, I'm not sure if you can hear us, but we've lost your audio. So what Don is showing here essentially is that this is the end product of what our uh, blog engine will look like using that Skeleton CSS engine. And as you mentioned, Skeleton is uh, just a little bit more lightweight. You can essentially use anything. Uh, the Dev Express controls are very flexible. And so what's interesting about this is that once you get it built with Skeleton, you can have a very nice weight re responsive blog engine. So here we've got uh, a, a nice top bar and it's got that grid system that Don mentioned earlier. Yeah, can you hear me again? 
Hi, welcome back. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what went wrong there, but uh, I'm back. It's intermittent <laughs> grumbling. Uh, thanks for your uh, thanks for your backup move, but uh, <laughs> I'd like to take it from here. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. All right. So I've uh, I've put on a, a web page with the end results, and uh, I can show you a couple of uh, responsive things here. So uh, what you can see, you've got a, a couple of blog posts. Put in two sample ones, and I've got our really cool cloud control. This cloud control I'm gonna use in this demo because I never used it and I still want to use it, so I'm gonna use it in there anyway. But what you uh, what you will see if I make this screen smaller, everything resizes nicely, and you see that the cloud control has disappeared. And that is because I specified in CSS that it should go down and as you can see it is it is here right now so that is one of the responsive tricks so if I make it a bit bigger and I click on the plus this is this is also one thing we're going to build uh, and we're going to build part of it today and uh, we're going to finish it off next week uh, this is your facility to enter a blog post so if you click it you will get a nice pop-up you will get this nice looking form with DevExpress controls, of course, and if I resize this browser again, you will see that a couple of things are happening. The pop-up is resizing, and also the the form controls are aligning. And you will also see that those buttons they are doing uh, something as well. If I make it bigger, they will align to the right. You see, and if I make it smaller, they will just align in the center. So these are just a couple of responsive tricks uh, and we're gonna build uh, a lot of it today so I can show you also how it's working in, in the end so if I put on a new post and I will uh, put in a, a sample group I can uh, specify a number of uh, tags here so this is by using our really cool token box. I'll leave it to one. And I'll enter just one line of code. So what's happening next is we can attach a couple of images. I will not do that right now because I haven't prepared my images. I'm sorry, but uh, next week I'll pump in tons of images. If I hit OK, you'll see that through a callback everything is being updated so there is a menu item with it there is uh, if I click on it you will go to it I just did this one so here is the post that I just did with the one line of code and I can also go to this one so this is basically what we're gonna be building and there was one what it did have images here I did upload a couple of images and what we'll be doing here is we'll be using the image gallery, the brand new image gallery to uh, to display your images. So this is the end result. Let's get coding into Visual Studio because we've got lots of code to do. So basically this is where we ended last week. This is our data model and I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to even close this, these windows because we will not be touching any data today. I'm going to add a new empty project. It's not completely empty, I have to admit, because I'm going to use the DevExpress template gallery for creating the empty application. Uh, the reason that I'm doing that is um, uh, because I want to have all references set up properly uh, to the DevExpress control, so that's the reason that I will take the template gallery. As you can see, you will get a nice almost application where you can pick what kind of application you want to be building, and in this case it's WinForms, but I obviously want to do ASP.NET, so you can pick MVC project templates to WinForm or uh, WebForm templates. So now we'll go for the web forms and I'll pick the empty one. I will call this one uh, 
uh, this, so I know it's the website, and I'm going to let it create. In the meantime, I will go to the website of the skeleton uh, boilerplate, and uh, you see it's already here. And uh, it's it's just an open source kind of thing. It's really small. <coughs> it uh, contains uh, just a number of files. It's got a bit of a description here as well, but most important, uh, the grid system is here set up. Uh, most important, there is a download link, so you can download it from GitHub and uh, start using it. I've already downloaded it and extracted it, uh, and I put it in here. So this is basically the whole skeleton framework. It's got an index.html with some sample HTML. It only has uh, three style sheets and uh, a number of uh, icons for your uh, Apple device or your ordinary uh, FF icon. So I think that my uh, project is finished. Yeah, it's here. So, and it is a basic empty project with the only difference that it's got all the dev express assemblies in there and it's got some settings in the web.config for dev express controls as well and uh, there is also one thing I'm going to change because I don't want to use the standard dev express team but I want to use the moderno team so I want to change it here and now all of a sudden all controls all dev express controls will switch to the moderno team so that's You'll see that in a minute. That's really nice. I'm going to save this. I'm going to get my skeleton files and I'm going to drag those files into my solution. So there we go. And let me make this the startup project. Well, as you can see, this is the default index.html. And if I run this, then uh, you will have a real basic uh, responsive layout. So if I make it a bit smaller, you will see that everything is dropped underneath each other, and this is like the most simple responsive thing. So not too exciting, so let's get rid of that. And uh, let me add a master patch to the project. So uh, let's say new item. Uh, I'm in C sharp and I'm going to add a web forms master page. I'm going to call it like this. And I'm going to put this in. All right, so now I'm going to copy out some, some uh, code which we will need uh, from the index.html and uh, I will start with the head section. It will include all the CSS, it will include uh, a number of other things as well. So I will just copy this, I will paste it in here, and I will only change this one. Make that a run at server. So I've got all the basic stuff in my master page right now. Well, obviously with uh, web forms, you do need a form tag, so I'm going to leave that one in, and I'm going to make it the root element. I'm going to remove these two. I'm going to leave the content placeholder in there for a sec, because we're going to need it anyway. And uh, I'm now going to, if you remember the slide, let me show it to you one more time. I'm now basically going to implement uh, this kind of stuff. So, going back to my... Uh, my master page and I'm going to get some stuff. I will first start with some skeleton specific tags which is called page. So this will tell the framework that everything which is inside this one is uh, one page. Then I will place my first band which is the header which contains the logo and I will place that inside that page. Let me explain what happens here. I, I have the band, so that was that was the band from the slideshow, and I'm putting in a header element, a HTML5 header element, um, 
together with a diff which will make sure that this has the full width of my grid. So it's got the 16 columns. And in there I'm putting a H1 which will in the end contain my logo and uh, and some more information here. But uh, yeah, if we're going to look at this right now, and I can probably show you, but I should disable these ones, probably. No, I can't because I need a page as well. So I'm going to leave it for now. I'm going to now put in a second band, which will contain my menu. That one will just look like this. And I will also put in a HTML5 element uh, to tell uh, the browser that it is my navigation section. I'll close that also and uh, this will be my menu. So I'm going to put in some text here, menu. In a minute we're going to put in a really cool menu. So that will be my header and my navigation. So now we could actually place the uh, content placeholder inside another band which will hold the content in place. So if I'm going to just replace that by this, you can see I'm specifying the class band again, so skeleton knows this is, is a band. And I'm putting some default content in here as well, but uh, we will override it in the, in the content pages. So Last but not least, I want to have like a small footer. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to put in another div, which is a band again. And I'm going to close that down. And also for that, I'm going to put in some HTML5 specific tags as well. And I'm going to keep my footer fairly simple. I'm just putting in my name and uh, some copyright. So basically, this is this is how uh, how our page looks HTML wise. So what I can do now is I'm going to add a new content page. Otherwise, I can't preview it. And I'm going to say, "Give me that web form with master page." I'm going to call it default, so it will be loaded by default. I'm going to pick my master. And I'm going to get rid of this index.html because I don't need it anymore. So let's see if I build this. It is not giving me any errors. Uh, let me also put in some extra stuff because I want to have some sample text in my content page. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put in uh, a container div which will have like a 12 column element, which will be my main content. And it will also have, I can just copy it in. Well, 16 minus 12 is four, so let's make this one four. And I'm gonna close this one down. Now I should need some sample content to see if it all works out nicely. So. What I'm going to do there is I'm going to go to a site which is for web development. It's an awesome site. It's called Lipsum.org. You might have seen that lorem ipsum text here and there, and it's the ideal format of uh, checking if your site is aligning properly when resizing and stuff like that. I'm just going to generate five paragraphs of it. I'm going to copy some stuff out of here. I'm now going to put it just in a paragraph and I'm going to make another one here which will be a bit smaller so I'm just getting some stuff out of here. There you go. So basically this should be visible. So let's see how this how this looks. All right. Well, that looks pretty boring, but it does work a bit like expected. So I've got like a band on top of here, doesn't have any logo. I've got the menu container here. I've got my content here. I've got some side content here and I've got my footer here. So if I resize this, you'll see that the side content is dropping down 
and it ends up here. So this is basically the first step of our design. So to let it look a, a bit more pretty, we need to uh, to add some CSS to it. So we're going to do that right now. Before I'm going to do that, I will first add in two images uh, because I happen to have a logo in SVG and PNG format. So I'm just going to add them here like that. And I'm now going to open up the style sheet files. Well, there are two style sheet files that you basically shouldn't touch with skeleton, which is the base. It's got like all the main definitions here. And it's got, and it's the skeleton one. It's got some additional stuff in there. It's got like the container uh, definitions, and the bands and the page and so on and so on. You will not be touching this one either. The only one that you need to modify to get your look and feel into it is this one. And this is by default it's it's pretty empty. The only interesting bits which are in there are the media queries. Now we'll get into that a bit later. But here you have some default dimensions of screens and if your screen is, is um, matching any of these dimensions, then it will pick those selectors. And that's that's a bit the trick of the media queries. But for now, I'm going to leave that also for a minute. I will now get some really basic CSS stuff to set some things up. And I will paste it in and explain it later because I can type fast, but that not not that fast. So I'll just set up a couple of line heights for the headers. I'm putting in a couple of margins, some paragraphs, and uh, some block block quote paragraphs. We'll get to that later. And I'm I'm gonna format a couple of uh, list items like the ordered ones and the unordered ones. I'm putting in some margins and some line heights and stuff. So this is not really exciting. The other one. I'm going to paste in is uh, slightly different, and that one is for positioning. It's quite an essential one. This is this is fixing the so-called CSS boxing issue. What this basically does is uh, suppose you have an element which has a width of 100 pixels, and uh, you're putting in some paddings and some margins and some stuff. How is that browser dealing with those paddings and those margins? I mean, by default, your element will get bigger because of the paddings. So if you have a padding of four, your your element will have an actual width which is wider of 100. And to, to make sure that the padding and the margins are happening inside that element, we need to specify this these tags. So this will make sure that your design doesn't fall apart. Further, I'll put in two extra things which are also a bit for uh, pre-causing any problems. Uh, this is to make sure that images won't break. And this one is also pretty important because our form is our root uh, node at our document. And we don't want our form tag to mess up anything with margins and paddings and stuff. So I will make this form tag just like invisible with no margins, no paddings whatsoever, that it is not interfering with the grid. So those are basically some, some, some really elementary CSS things for, for every site. So now I'm going to style up the band, the, the basic band. And uh, the basic uh, band navigation will have some padding, will have some background, and that's about it. Keep it as simple as possible. Um, and for the navigation, the band which holds the navigation, I'm going to put in an extra selector class which will give it a different background color because the standard band has a background of this. But I want the menu to be black or almost black. So I'm overriding it by uh, giving this extra selector to the band. And uh, we could probably already see what's happening. And yes, you can because you see that the band is already black and the text is slightly different. So that is that is one step. We will also do the same for the footer. I want the footer to be uh, 
that same color again and uh, it will have a slightly different padding so if I save this one and I'll check it out you'll see that this one is colored already again so I'm gonna put on some extra stuff for the for the uh, bottom band and we can take a look again and it still looks good so those are some some really basic tricks now we're going to do some stuff on the header because this uh, this one is like completely ugly obviously it's even an ugly font so I want it to be replaced by that image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trick with the CSS to make the text disappear but give that element a background which is the actual image so it is still a h1 in the HTML but it is rendered as an image before I can do that I will first put in some uh, some padding and I will give some specific uh, settings on the h1 dot logo and if you take a look to the master page you will see that the logo is here and it will only be applied if it is the class logo on the h1 but that's uh, some some, some fairly simple CSS. So now I'm going to put in a little trick because I'm going to put the following code in which I will explain also. Here I will say that if it is a hyperlink within that H1 I will replace the background with this image. I will make the font like non-existent. The, the, the text shadow will be none and the color of the text will be transparent so the text will be there but you just don't see it so if I save this one then you will see what is happening the text is being replaced by the logo well we can do some responsive tricks here as well because if the site gets smaller it would be nice if the dev express logo gets smaller as well because it's it's, it's a bit big now I mean it's not ugly but it's just like a bit big so we can do some some media query stuff on that and uh, that is one of the nice things of the skeleton framework so what I'm going to do I'm going to this bottom section so when your device has a max width of 479 pixels I'm going to code in some extra CSS here and what I'm going to do, I'm just getting the same selector and uh, this doesn't seem okay to me. So let me get that out of the way. And I'm just overriding the width and the height. So if I go back to the, to the top one, this one was 250 at 40. So I'm just halving it. You see? Let's see what happens. Uh, here we are. Uh, I make it bigger, so this is the original size. If I now make it smaller, then we will see that it has disappeared altogether. And that has something to do, I think, with this one. You see, it, it is smaller. So it is picking this one. Uh, let me see what went wrong here. Yeah, obviously. You need to specify the correct dimension. So let me test it again. And here you will see that whenever that size is smaller as that 479 in this case, then it will just scale down that image. So this is one of the tricks what you can do with responsive CSS. Pretty nice, huh? So let's get back to the master page because we're totally not done yet. Uh, let me see. We're going to put in a menu and that menu is going to be our very nice Dev Express menu. I'm going to just pick it out here. I'm going to double click this. 
it's in here. I'm going to call it like this. Uh, I'm going to make the auto the item author width set to false. I'm going to set the width to 100% because yeah, that menu needs to be resized. So that's that. Uh, and I am going to put in a couple of test items. Uh, let me see if I forget something else. I don't think so. Um, so I'm going to put in one item which which has the text plus it's got a name insert and I'm going to put in a second one I'm going to call that the hash and I'm going to call that edit this is going to be used at a later stage but I'm, I need a couple of items obviously to style this uh, this menu so uh, I'm also going to put in a CSS class uh, to get some some specific styling on this menu, so that's going to be this. If I'm going to reload this one, it will probably look not that nice because um, the menu is uh, basically in the Moderno theme, and as you can see, it is blue, and it's got like this little thing. And I don't want that, and I don't want it to be blue. So I also want the text. You saw that the text was not visible, and now it is. So I'm gonna give those items an item style with a text with a four color of uh, just white. So let me reload this one. So I should be able to see some text. Yeah, great. And now I'm gonna open up Firefox. I'm going to paste this one in because I will now need to override a couple of styles to get the menu looking the way that I want. So how is that being done? I'm going to right click this one, I'm going to say inspect and make this a bit bigger and here you can see the menu and here you can see the menu item the second one is a separator, so it's got a class DXM separator, and it's it's all very good setup with names of classes and stuff. So you can do some some really quick wins on that to get the menu in the in the look and feel that you want. So uh, what I will do is I will uh, first get rid of that separator. Separator. Well, if you look, it's a DXM separator, and it's inside a, num a number of other styles. So here, I'm going to paste this one in. This will make sure that the separator class is overridden. What I will then do is I will give the menu a transparent background. Which is also the separator and the, and the items. So next, I'm going to do something with the list items, but those are the menu items. And the menu items, I'll put on a different padding, a margin at the bottom, put in some font and some font weight. So let's see what happens if I reload it. Uh, let me close this one down. So here, the alignment is okay, and I only need to change that that focused color basically because that one is uh, not what I want. So to do that, there is a class that is also visible. Uh, if I hover over it, then you will see that it's got like the DXM hovered one. You see it's now yellow. So by overriding that kind of stuff, we can change that behavior as well. I 
and that is done by inserting these selectors. Well, yeah, you have to figure out a bit in Firebug uh, which ones they are, but as you saw, you can you can find it out. Uh, and if I now reload it, I've got my menu styled. So I've made a couple of small changes in the Moderna theme, specifically on this menu, without redoing a whole new theme because that involves a bit of work. And I do have to say that this you shouldn't go over the top with these kind of adjustments because if we decide to change some, some styling and some stuff in future versions, you might run into problems. But in this scenario, I mean, you can oversee it because it is not that much. And uh, yeah, this is, this is an approach of uh, doing that. All right, so we've got the menu styled as well. Um, I want to do uh, one other thing, which is a bit of interaction and some JavaScript. And so we are already running a bit late on the time. But let's see how far we can go. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a pop-up control, a DevExpress pop-up control, because what I've shown in the final demo, you would see a pop-up with a form on it where you can post some stuff. So that pop-up control can be done here. Uh, let me get it. Where was it again? Da, 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 da. I'm not seeing it right now. Yeah, that's the wrong one. Okay. So here is the pop-up control, and I've sent, set a couple of properties. I've set the close section to none. I've given it a client instance name because I want to do some scripting with it. Pop-up align correction. I'm going to disable it because I want to position it myself. Load contents via callback, set to none. Modal, it should be modal, and no header, no shadow, and do give me a footer. So uh, these are fairly simple. I'm going to remove this event for now. Well, as you might know, the pop-up control can, can be used as a standalone pop-up control, but it can all, also host a collection of pop-up windows, and that's the one that we're going to use. I'm going to create one window for updating or editing an item, and I'm going to create one for uh, inserting a new item. So we do that by inserting a pop-up window with a name and a collection. And I'm going to say, I'm, I'm giving this one the name insert. And I'm going to put in some text as well, insert, so we know which one is showing. And I'm going to put in the closing tag as well. Uh, I do want to use the footer template at some stage, so I'm going to put that in as well, but I'm going to leave it empty. So that will be basically it. And I'm going to copy this pop-up window, and I'm going to create a second one, which will have a different name, so it can be identified by JavaScript and C Sharp as well, and I'm going to call this one Edit. And maybe you've noticed already that this name is insert, and this menu item also has a name of insert. This one is edit, and that one also has a name of edit. Next week, we're going to do some stuff with that kind of names and stuff, so to make it all dynamically loading. So this one should be changed to edit, so we know what's going on. Um, and now this pop-up should show up exactly at 
where the menu begins. So to make that happen, the most easy way is to place a little div with an ID, uh, which can be used uh, by JavaScript to locate uh, that stuff. So this is, um, I will call it navigation, give it a style width of 100%. And I'm just putting the menu in there. All right, so that's that's been set up. Um, it didn't resolve my uh, pop-up control, so that's a bit that's a bit uh, unfortunate. Let me see if it finds it. I'm also not sure why it wasn't uh, showing in my toolbox. Pop up control. This would be probably be enough. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to put in some JavaScript to get that pop up showing. And uh, well, that pop-up should be activated by the menu system. So I'm going to put in some code with the menu system. It does have a client-side events. Item click. And uh, let me paste some stuff in there for the, because we are running a bit out of time. Uh, I'm gonna get this one. What happens here? Let me explain it quickly. If one of the items is clicked, I'm gonna check if that item has a name set because we're gonna add some more in the future, some items. If that's true, I'm gonna check if that pop-up control has a window with the same name. If so, I'm going to check if it is visible or not. And if it's not visible, then I'm going to show it. But I'm going to show it through a perform callback. So I can go to the server, modify the content of the pop-up, and return, and then I will show it. If the pop-up was already visible, it, I will just hide it. And in that case, I will cancel the default behavior of that, of that, uh, that menu item. So that is, in a nutshell, what it does. Uh, before yeah, before this is going to happen, I probably need some scripts in the pop-up controls as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to enter some client-side events as well. And what will happen here is, okay, when that window is shown, uh, it should be uh, positioned at the correct spot. So in the on show event, client-side show event. I will paste in this code. And what, did, what this basically means is that, okay, I'm gonna check uh, this, this div that I just added with this ID, which is basically this one. Let me change that. I'm gonna check where that is, and I'm gonna check what its dimensions are. But as you can see, I'm using some, some jQuery stuff here, so I'll probably need jQuery as well. So um, that is added fairly simple by NuGet. So I'm going to just add jQuery, install it. So it's getting me to the CSS, uh, the JavaScript files. Close it down. And in the master page, I'm just dragging that script in. Give me this one. And we've got jQuery inside. So uh, this one, we'll do later. So basically what I do is I get the position of this container and I check also what its dimensions are. And I'm going to resize that window so it, it, it shows nicely. After some, some other stuff, I, I also need to do that on the init event. I need to initialize some stuff as well. And 
I'm going to paste it in as well. What I will do here is because if that window is sizing or the position is changing, the orientation, I need to realign that pop-up again if it's visible. So this is basically exactly what it does. Through jQuery, I bind to these two events of your browser. And this is being executed. And this will make sure that that same window is being realigned again and that it's being uh, put on the same width and the same left position of that uh, NAV container element. So what we also do here is I'm, I'm doing something with this window uh, W1D variable because I'm going to keep a reference to the currently open window and I'm storing it in here and that's being done in this position. I stepped over it fairly quick. But I'm going to keep a reference to the current active window. So that, that means that if a window is closed, I should clear up that reference, otherwise uh, things could go wrong. So in the close up event of the pop-up window. So we're now going to build and preview it. And let's see what happens if I click the plus sign. All right, here we've got our insert pop-up window. If I click the plus sign again, it's gone. If I click the hash sign, I'll get the edit pop-up window. And if I click this one again, it's also gone. So there is one thing I would like to check, and that is what happens if I resize the screen. Wow, you see the pop-up window is realigned and resized according to the grid specifications. I would say this is pretty cool. And if I click it again, it's gone. So this is it for this webinar. If you haven't already, please download and try 14.1 today. And just a reminder, when you leave this webinar, you will see a short survey. Please take a second to comment. We really do appreciate it. All right. Thank you to Don. Thank you for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.